what we're about to do might not seem to match the nature of a, of a physics website but it's a it's an extremely interesting exercise into just how interactive um certain mediums can get uh especially in terms of looking at the effects of relativity so this is a game called a slower speed of light by the mit game lab um, it's free to download but you collect these little orbs um, and each orb incrementally slows down the speed of light and the effects you observe is yes you can get incrementally you know indefinitely close to the speed of light you can't reach it and it's it's an extremely interesting exercise in, in looking at what actually happens when you reach these relativistic speeds collect orbs to slow down light to walking speed so you can finally move on so you see how many orbs you've collected there's only a hundred increments here but by the hundredth increment something special happens you can pair your own speed with the speed of light so you have a little speedometer now this is interesting because you actually see beyond the visible uh, part of, of uh, the spectrum on which light exists the electromagnetic spectrum you see beyond the visible part you reach infrared and ultraviolet what we know is that there is a relativistic doppler effect and as you reach these relativistic speeds what happens is well we know things change in relativity the speed of light does not so if so many things about light are the same what changes and what what happens is with this relativistic doppler effect if, is if the velocity of a wave is equal to its frequency times its wavelength and the velocity in this case is c which is a constant then the wavelength and the frequency have to change so what happens is you see light differently as you move at different speeds in relation to light so moving towards light very very fast will result in a redshift we see infrared light moving away from light at relativistic speeds will cause a blue shift so what happens is when there's an extreme redshift and, and and you're able to see infrared part of the spectrum you will see infrared and that's like a glowing like a like a radiant glowing from objects uh, and the same goes for ultraviolet when you're moving at relative speeds away you do see this this aggressive blue dark dark blue tone this ag aggressive ultraviolet as light gets slower you'll start to see beyond what humans can typically see on the edges of my screen it is still very much blue which is the majority of the tones when I started off um, and I think the purpose of these people is to give a, a, f a reference to moving objects as you reach relative speeds um, but you can see there's this red coming off of these which is a red shift and the, the brighter the red the, the closer to being infrared light that that red is um, and I would assume that if I move backwards the there is purple so on the on the pay attention to the white parts of the the orbs or the watermelons <laughs> they look like watermelons it there's purple that appears on them if you could see that um, and the, when you move away it's purple which is a blue shift into the ultraviolet part of the spectrum and moving towards is a red shift and the, the glowing red that doesn't even exist at all when you when you're stationary this is normal vision of light the, there's no red on these huts but moving towards them turns quite a bit of it red which is infrared and you can see there's also blue which is ultraviolet but when you move away so it's a very pronounced red or blue shift respectively uh, which is an example or, or a visualization of how the relativistic Doppler effect works so we're just going to keep going and there's more separated and pronounced differences in the light and I'm beginning to see a lot of color differences and the, the light at the edges of my screen closer to being behind me are uh, uh, turning bluer so when I'm moving away from it it is very obviously blue and now more of the infrared is filling up more of my screen the infrared light b bouncing off the mushroom caps when I move towards it 
but I would see ultraviolet light when I moved away. Now, because the effects of this, this shift are so much more pronounced, now I'm seeing both. Um, so more light is visible. What was that? Oh, when I turned around, it was black. Uh, more light is a lot more visible. Um, the, the closer to the speed of light you get. It's very strange. If I look behind me rapidly as well, there's just black. A large part of my vision is black. Just pick up this orb. Just looking up and down. It's very interesting. And I'm actually running into these things. The developers did say that you would be used to walking at non-relative speeds because that's what your brain does every day. But once you reach relative speeds, your brain would have a harder time processing the way the world around you warps. And it, and, and it does look like there's a bit of a fisheye effect. Things that I'm heading directly towards, the length between me and them, shortens it contracts uh we're at 99 so we'll just revel here a bit because uh, a significant thing does happen when they hit 100 right now i'm clipping through things uh, i'm not sure if that's game design or if that's relativity but let's pick up that last orb with a big flash seven minutes and one second Do it. Oh. i feel like the clipping is very much relativity the distance I'm accelerating through and as I accelerate and I'm hitting that speed of light or not hitting it but approaching it very very closely um, I'm finding that things warp towards me and, and things that I'm not heading towards warp look like they appear as though they're warping away from me I think that's just length contraction this is, this is difficult to control now actually it's like this distance becomes infinitely close something behind me walking past these vertical lines or running bends crazily so if I'm not walking directly towards it it bends away from me but that might not be bending away that's just the things to, uh, that I'm moving towards uh, approaching me or I'm approaching it at a contracted distance and other things aren't so much so even if it's attached to the same body like that big tower the bits I wasn't heading directly towards looked away and, and the things that I were heading to uh, was heading towards appeared closer like this fisheye effect the end oh so there was some time dilation so they were recording uh, your time seven minutes and one second world uh, world time so this is how those moving people counted time this is my proper time at the top and how they counted time, 7 minutes and 25 seconds. It was a 24 second difference. There'd obviously be a very, 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 um, that's significant. 24 seconds is extremely significant. I'm assuming this effect is more pronounced the longer and clo the closer you are to light for longer durations of your proper time. I'm guessing the more pronounced this, this effect becomes, this time dilation. So let's ask them what happened. You see visually the effects exemplified of, of, of time dilation and length contraction. In a slower speed of light, the speed of light slows down with every orb you pick up. It is impossible for you to reach the speed of light, but certain relativistic effects become more visible as you get very close. Relativistic Doppler effect, so that's what we were talking about. Moving towards, so we know that they were moving towards the, the orbs and the huts in this image at the top, because there's red bouncing off of them and moving away from the mushroom caps and the the uh, parts of these stone pillars. Ultraviolet. Light behave, behaves like a wave, and different wavelengths appear as different colours. So the behaviour is a wave, as all waves do, have a Doppler effect to them. You, the uh, perceived frequency and wavelength changes. As you and other objects move around, the wavelength of light changes, appearing redder or bluer to your eyes. Some light becomes infrared or ultraviolet, 
with which your eyes cannot usually see, and other invisible sources of light will become visible. A little pun here, I see heat. The searchlight effect. Moving left, the objects on the left are brighter than the objects on the right. Light also behaves like a stream of particles called photons. When you run towards a stream of photons, more photons hit you and the object becomes brighter. This effect is also known as relativistic aberration. Special relativity. Light always moves at the same speed. So if the speed of light is constant, then distances and times in the world around you have to warp. Your time is different from the time in the world, time dilation, and your distances are different from the distances in the world, Lorentz transformation. And we also know that there's effects of that called length contraction. You have to be much closer to the speed of light to notice the more dramatic effect effects of Lorentz transformation compared to the Doppler and searchlight effects. At the end of the game, the Doppler and searchlight effects are removed to make the Lorentz transformation easier for you to see. Runtime effect. Normally, light is extremely fast, but it still takes time for photons to reach our eyes. When you look at anything, you are actually observing incoming light from some time in the past. The farther you look into space, the further you look into history. This is easily noticeable when you look at objects moving relative to yourself. Objects normally beyond your field of view can become visible when you move near the speed of light, as you see them as they were in the past. Even though the speed of light is extremely, extremely high, you know, 2.99 or 3 times 10 to the 8 uh, meters per second, you you cannot say that its speed is infinite. Its speed is finite. It is, although it's the speed limit of the universe, essentially nothing else can reach that speed. Nothing else with mass, at least. Um, it's not an infinite, and it's not an infinitely fast value. So, time still applies to photons. Those those photons hitting your eyes from the more distant stars are older than the photons hitting your eyes at that same time from the nearest stars. That's an exploration into what exactly happens in an interactive sense because your brain is only used to processing movement at non-relativistic speeds and moving at non-relativistic speeds means you don't see these effects. Although it's not 100% accurate, nowhere near a lab simulation, you relearn ways of, of, of traveling, of moving where distances in front of you shorten and move away from things as the blue shift and the red shift. You have to deal with the brightnesses and the colors that aren't what they normally are. Things bend and warp as if you're not, you know, in ways that you're not used to. You have all these effects that you have to deal with and and you, you, you move in a way that you're not used to. And if you're moving directly in a line back and forth, distances seem to shorten it's it's crazy and the fact that there were 24 seconds of difference which may not seem like much but on the scale of of regular discrepancies in time that's significant that is an immense difference of time 24 seconds uh it's a lot easier to understand than running through maths and 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 written concepts and linking you know linking these electromagnetic wave to to light waves to the speed of light to frames of reference Einstein's uh, Einstein's postulates and, and you build on the first premises of special relativity then you get to the effects of special relativity and then you get to experiments and examples and, and, and maths behind special relativity you build your way and you reach the mass energy equivalence and then you and then you reach this point where there's other relativistic things there's energy there's 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 uh, momentum and there's new equations that are, that are different to the classical equations. And then you have these classical equations which you realize, well, I'm traveling at a non-relativistic speed and now the relativistic equation reduces itself down to, to be pretty much identical to the classical equation. You know, relativistic terms would simplify to zero or near zero. So you're building this, this knowledge up and then you reach this point where now I'm reaching relativistic examples of mass and energy being equivalent and I have all of these things built up and, and rather than teaching the maths to uh, imagine the effects, 
this game does the mathematical processing for you in your computer and you simply get to experience and witness what's so special about special relativity. <laughs>